Isolated, bitter, burned out, no one wants to be there, but a lot of us can get there at different points. How do we work together? How do we get results? And more importantly, how do we do that without being a jerk? The ranks of executive leadership in our country are filled with narcissists. Is it possible to get results without being a jerk? All of the managers, all the leaders I've coached all over the country, I've never met a single person who took that job and said, David, you know why I took this job? Because I want to cause people pain. <laughs> None of us get into this work to cause other people pain, but frustration set in. Fifty percent of American managers don't get any training. And we would never do that to a frontline employee. And so our leaders and managers, statistically, don't have the tools they need and the skills they need and the training to be able to do their work effectively. Everybody's frustrated. You can have the very best plan, all of the resources assembled and everything else, and if you don't have people to go with it, you don't really have anything. How do you blend the bottom line results you need to accomplish with the human spirit we're gonna give you the foundational tools to do that today. I've lived the life of the unequipped manager, the leader who didn't get the skills and the training that they need. When I work with your leaders, you get practical leadership inspiration, something that's gonna make a difference today. And I know it's gonna make a difference because I've done it. Our job is not to make people do anything. You can't motivate people but you can cultivate. And that's our number one job as a leader is to build that environment that allows that energy, the gifts, the talents, everything that people bring to the table be released together with a team to accomplish results. Don't motivate, cultivate. I took away a reminder that leaders are only as good as the teams around them. What David's able to do is to find something simple and teachable that can really have an impact on the performance of teams. How he said it, the content that he did, how he made it real, I think is going to be meaningful to all 500 people that were here today. Leadership humility first is about recognizing you have strengths and so do other people. Leaders seek strength, they don't focus on frailty, they don't focus on all the things you wish or think you were owed. They focus on what does this person have to offer. And I've got a secret for you, when you've screwed up, your people already know, it's not a secret. <laughs> Every interaction you're in, it's about two things. It's about results, it's about relationships. This is about accountability, about living up to your commitments to one another. Do you honor their time by practicing accountability? And you'll be amazed when people start reconnecting what they do to why they do it at the energy they'll do it with. Humility, confidence, together. If you'll go into every interaction with those cultivated within you, it will completely shift your way of going about influencing other people and working together to get things done.